So I'm Dave Maltz. I'm a technical fellow and a corporate vice president at Microsoft, responsible for Azure networking. I'm also one of the many founders of Sonic. So what is Sonic? Sonic stands for Software for Open Networking in the Cloud. It's an open source network operating system. That means it's the software that you can run on the routers or switches that control the data flow through your network. Now, Sonic is unusual in a couple of ways. One, it's built on top of what we call the Switch Abstraction Interface, or SAI. That's a layer that allows it to run on the ASICs that have been produced by many, many ASIC vendors. And so there are over 100 network devices from over 10 network uh, ASIC vendors that all support that same operating system, Sonic. Sonic's also interesting in that it's container-based, which means it's very easy for the owner of the Sonic switch to switch in and out which implementation of a protocol is being used, or what's the set of protocol suites or features they need running on that switch. The idea, of course, is that every line of code has the potential to have bugs, and you only want to be running on your network routers and switches exactly the features that you need so you can get high reliability. Sonic was also designed to be very agile and easy to extend and upgrade. There are new containers, new feature sets coming out all the time from the very large open source community of contributors that are building Sonic. Um, that means it's also very easy for folks who have some unique scenario themselves if they have software engineers familiar for writing uh, on top of Linux, on top of a containerized ecosystem, which many web developers and microservice developers are very familiar with, they can add capabilities that will now run on the routers and switches in their networks. What that means is that we've been building this uh, ecosystem of hardware devices and software capabilities that began in the data centers of cloud scalers like Microsoft. Microsoft is running it on hundreds of thousands of switches, controlling millions of ports in our production data centers alone. It's also running in the data centers of cloud scalers like Alibaba, Tencent, Baidu, LinkedIn. Um, and that has made it a very robust, battle-tested, if you will, stack, which we know is highly reliable. Over time, more and more features have been added to that set of containers that you can run on Sonic switches, which give it the capabilities needed not just by the cloud scalers, but also by enterprises. And it's been picked up by companies like Target, Comcast, eBay, for use in their networks as well. It basically means that Sonic over time has become uh, an ecosystem with a lot of hardware, a lot of different software capabilities that supports many of the common uh, network scenarios today. And because of that extensibility, we're always taking Sonic forward. We're supporting new scenarios like telco, 5G, edge support, uh, using routers as part of a software-defined network to map different kinds of hardwares into the private policies of a software-defined virtual network. In some of the 5G, telco, and edge use cases, we're using Sonic switches uh, inside edge deployments that are running packet core software on top of them, or that are even potentially running right at the radio front end networks. Um, again, when you're building those types of very latency sensitive, throughput sensitive applications, you want to use all the hardware that you have available for doing the processing. Switches today are very capable devices. Switches from different manufacturers have the ability to do all sorts of transformations on packets. And by running Sonic on that network switch, we can actually include uh, the switch hardware itself as some of the transformations that we're doing on the data flowing through that system. Okay, as we think about Sonic and SmartNICs, that's another area where there is a lot of innovation happening. Um, many of the so SmartNICs themselves are running Linux, and so Sonic uh, can be looked at as an operating system that can run and control that system on a chip environment. Another innovation that we've been working on recently is what we call Dash. Dash basically is a set of SDN APIs so that you can program not just at the network primitive concepts, but you can program devices at the level of SDN policies. Uh, so with Dash being implemented on top of Sonic capable switches, you imagine your SDN controllers being able to directly tell your switches, this is how I'd like packet transformations to happen. This is how I'd like, for example, that NetApp filer, that other piece of uh, network hardware, that device that maybe has no SDN capabilities of its own, like a camera, a power supply, how we'd like to see that injected into a virtual network with a full set of SDN policies applied. Uh, that also can be then taken all the way down directly to the smart next. You can imagine I have a bare metal server which doesn't know about any of the SDN capabilities of the network it's connected to, but it's got a SmartNIC. That SmartNIC's exposing those Sonic Dash APIs, and that allows 
whatever that bare metal server is connected to the SmartNIC to be included in the software defined network as a first class citizen. Some of the uh, analysts who've looked at it have talk, talked about Sonic as having the potential to be the Linux of the network operating system world, and that's really how we see it. It's one of the reasons we're excited to be coming to Linux Foundation. We think it's a great platform on which a lot of innovation and growth can happen. As I said, it's already in production in a large number of uh, truly availability critical scenarios, so we know it has that availability and reliability. And with the feature set and the support of the large community to move forward, uh, we think it's really going to support innovation and in bridging the worlds between networking hardware and the innovation that we see in the open source uh, server microservice community.